everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be making this super cute little watermelon slice shelf buddy. If this is your first visit to my channel, it would be amazing if you just took a moment to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. All right, so this little fella, he is not a toy. I do not recommend giving him to a child. He's made using double crochet stitches. It's very, very lightly stuffed. This little chap is literally just designed to hang out on your shelf, by your computer, in your kitchen. He's summery, he's fun. He is not designed for children. Massive disclaimer, now out of the way. So moving on from that, if you did wanna go ahead and make yourself this fun little cute watermelon slice, then this is what you're going to need. All right, so I have used for my little chap a uh, Stylecraft Cotton a Classic. However, you can use any yarn, any hook size that you like. The colors you are going to need are the sort of watermelony colors. So I've got a bright pink here, a lime green, and a sort of jade, bright sort of emerald green at the end. I don't know how well these, these colors are showing up on film, I think they seem a little bit blown out, but you want the sort of three different colors, the so two greens and a hot pink for the actual watermelon himself. Brand doesn't really matter, fiber doesn't really matter, I just happen to be using cotton. You're also going to need a tiny little scrap of a pale pink for his little cheeks, and you're going to need some black for his face embroidery and his little watermelon seeds. So, yarn to one side. You're going to need for the crochet itself a four millimeter crochet hook or hook appropriate to the size of the yarn that you are using. If you want your stitches to be a bit tighter, then I'd advise maybe going down to a three millimeter hook. But this little chap, I used a four millimeter hook for. You are also going to need a hook one mil smaller than you've used for the body for his little cheeks. So for mine, that means I use a three millimeter hook just for his cheeks, but for you, it would just be one hook size down from whatever it is that you've used. You're also gonna need a, a large eye darning needle, a stitch marker, a pair of scissors, some stuffing and some 10 millimeter safety eyes that I don't have any more to hand because they are now currently living in my watermelon's face because I am filming back to front. <laughs> That's it, there you go. Insider information for you today, I'm filming back to front. So I actually filmed this guy being made first, hence why he's got his little <laughs> you'll see that later on. So this is everything you are going to need for your little happy watermelon friend. As I say, he's just a bit of fun. It's summer. You wouldn't believe it here in the UK that it's summer because I don't know why. It's always just a bit meh here in the UK. We always expect beautiful sunshine and glorious weather and sometimes we do get it, but more often than not, it's very mediocre and it's more like a warm spring day. But we are gonna feel tropical today, people. This is a summery fun make. Let's get on and make this happy little watermelon guy. All right, with our pink yarn and our four millimeter crochet hook, we're going to form a magic ring. Now, if you don't know how to do this, I do have a video on how to do a magic ring, which I've linked to the little card up here or in the description box below. Now into your magic ring, you're going to chain two, which does not count as a stitch. So into the magic ring, you are going to place 12 double crochet stitches. Now, before you continue, you might want to just double check that you do in fact have 12 stitches excluding that chain two. So count the top Vs. 
Okay, when you've got 12 stitches, you can go ahead and pull your magic ring closed and then ignore the chain two, which will have now been crushed down into non-existence. And you're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of your first double crochet. So you'll have 12 double crochet in a circle for round one. Round two is an increased round. So chain two, which again does not count as a stitch. And you're going to place two double crochet into each of the 12 stitches around. So you will have at the end of this row, 24 double crochet. So it's two double crochet stitches into each stitch and around below. So just double check you've got 24 stitches and when you're happy ignore the chain two and join with a slip stitch to the top of that double crochet okay round three same as before chain two but this does not count as a stitch now place one double crochet into that exact same stitch where you came from and mark that double crochet stitch. Now in the next, you're going to do an increase. So two double crochet stitches into the same stitch. Now we're gonna repeat this all the way around. So one double crochet in the next stitch, two in the one after that. So one double crochet, increase all the way around. So you carry on and I shall meet you back over here to finish the round. One double crochet, then increase all the way round. So you'll be ending this round with an increase. Then join with a slip stitch to that marked double crochet right in the beginning. Ready to move on to round number four. Okay, round four, very similar again. Chain two, which does not count as a stitch. Now into the same stitch where you just chained two from, you're going to place a double crochet and mark that stitch. Then in the next stitch, place another double crochet. Then in the third stitch, increase. So two double crochet into that same stitch. And you're going to continue this pattern all the way around. Double crochet, double crochet, increase. Double crochet, double crochet, increase. All the way around. And again, you'll be ending on an increase over here.
Okay, to finish this round, you're going to slip stitch to that first double crochet of the round, chain one, and now we're going to be changing colour. So cut your yarn, pull it up, and grab your light green yarn. Okay, so with your light green yarn, you're going to pop your hook underneath that same stitch that you just joined to, pop a slip knot in your light green yarn, and pop it onto your hook. Pull the loop through to the front of your work, and then at this point, flip it over, and you're going to tie the pink end from your chain one that you just did to this light green end here. Now, none of these tails will be seen because they're going to be on the inside of your watermelon. So you don't need to worry too much. I'm just knotting it so that it's nice and secure on the back. I might do one more knot actually because cotton can be quite slippery at times. So I'm just gonna trim that off and I'm just gonna trim these ends a little bit so they're not flapping around whilst we're trying to crochet. So now you're ready to begin round five, which just as before, chain two, which does not count as a stitch, and pop a double crochet into that exact same stitch. And grab your stitch marker, pop it in that first double crochet, and then place a double crochet in the next two stitches. then increase. Now we're going to do this all the way around, three double crochet followed by an increase. So one, two, three, then increase. Do that all the way round. Okay, to finish this round, just like before, you're going to slip stitch to that very first double crochet, chain one, trim your yarn, and now bring in your dark green. All right, I've got my dark green yarn, and just like before, I'm going to pop my hook underneath that same stitch, put a slip knot on my finger, Pop it on my hook, draw that loop through, and then flip it over and just knot your sort of lime green to your sort of jade, darker green. Give it a nice little knot. I'm gonna again tie it a couple of times. Trim the ends slightly so they're not completely in my way. Now, for this round, we're going to chain one and pop a single crochet in that same stitch. Now, it gets a bit tight with that knot, but don't worry. You don't need to be too perfect. And for this round, oops, mark that first one. <laughs> You're just going to place a single crochet in every stitch all the way around. So no more increases, just straight up single crochet into every stitch all the way around. Now at the end of this round, you're going to slip stitch, oops, I can get my stitch marker out, to that very first single crochet, but do not cut your yarn. All right, so you have this tiny little seam running up the side. This is the point 
but you're going to fold your little watermelon in half. So you're just going to fold him in half. Now that seam acts sort of along the bottom here. So what we're now going to do is start to slip stitch to about this sort of point. Then we're going to add the safety eyes, do a bit of stuffing, and then we can finish off with cheeks and embroidery and the seeds. So pick up your folded circle. You're going to chain one. And now it gets a little bit fiddly and you don't need to worry. Oops, I'll help first in shop. You don't need to worry too much about exact placement. This is why we're not placing the eyes until we've started the slip stitching, just in case your stitches don't completely measure up. But you do not need to worry. Basically, what we're going to be doing is slip stitching these stitches together across the top. So you just want to find your first two sort of full, complete single crochets. And we're going to place our hook underneath one and underneath the next one and just slip stitch them together. So go under the next single crochet, its corresponding friend on the other side and just slip stitch them together. So start slip stitching these some of the way. We don't want to go too far because obviously we need to add facial features and some stuffing. But you just want to make a start on joining your little watermelon from a circle into a slice. So I'm going to take it to about this point. Pull up a loop and pop your stitch marker in just so you do not lose that loop that way see it's not coming out so now you've got your little watermelon sort of taking shape in sort of a slice form so now it's time to bring in your 10 millimeter safety eyes and decide where you want them now I put mine sort of on this third round so not here not here not here on the third round now because these are double crochet stitches, if you try putting your eye in between your stitches, it's just going to come straight back out again because that's quite a big gap. So when you place your safety eyes through these double crochet, you're going to be sort of going in between the post of one of your actual stitches themselves. So you're going to be going in between like that. So you sort of want to eyeball it really where you want your eyes to be. We will have little cheeks as well. So I'm going to pop my first one around about here. Now it is because we're going, we're splitting a stitch. You can see it comes through the stitch. Just be a little bit careful. You're not catching any of the threads and then sort of push it through. Don't put the back on yet. You want to make sure you've got both positioned where you're happy with them this one I may put a little bit further over here make sure they're in line I bet I'm gonna <laughs> why is it whenever I do this on camera I always end up with a very drunk looking sort of <laughs> face I can't perform under the pressure <laughs> so if it doesn't want to go in like mine's sort of lightly caught on something you can kind of rotate it and sort of almost screw it in to get it past that final little hump bit. So then you sort of want to look at it, decide are the eyes sort of where you want them, how big are you going to do the little mouth. I wonder if maybe I should put mine a little bit further apart. Do you know what, I'm not going to second guess myself, I'm just going to go with it because <laughs> life's too short for me to sit here procrastinating over a slightly wonky eye when you guys just want to know how to get this done. <laughs> Although I am sorely tempted to actually put this other eye more over here. No, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it. So when you're happy with the placement, or even if you're not happy with the placement, like I'm not, <laughs> she says grumbling, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. You pop on the safety backs for these eyes. Now, this is definitely designed to be a little sort of decoration. I would absolutely 100% not recommend giving this to a toy, especially to a child. <laughs> a toy to a child because it is double crochet stitches you're you know it's not it's not going to withstand for play you don't want the stuffing coming out it's, it's 
got disaster written all over it if you gave this to a child. So it's more of a sort of little decoration. So once the little safety eyes are on, grab a tiny little bit of stuffing. A little bit of stuffing. You can sort of lightly start to stuff this little bottom corner. But when I say lightly stuff, I mean lightly stuff because you don't want these to stretch to just completely distort your little watermelon guy. He's only meant to be lightly padded. So it's, I've only popped a light, little tiny bit of stuffing in and then I'm gonna pick this hoop loop back up and I'm gonna slip stitch a few more, taking more over to sort of this point and then we can put in a bit more stuffing and work out where his little smile is going to go. I'm going to take it to about there. I'm going to pop a bit more stuffing in. Don't forget to mark that stitch. But lightly, lightly with the stuffing. I also like to sort of squish them down a bit like this towards the sides. So they get more of a more of a curve. So you can see I'm not making him too fat. I'm just gently. I could really flatten him out. I'm not putting much stuffing in at all. So I'm putting in a little less towards these corners so they can kind of pinch down and I'm shaping him like that. He's definitely got a wonky face. <laughs> okay, when you're happy with the amount of stuffing, go ahead and finish off your slip stitches. You can, of course, add in an extra little bit of stuffing as you go but we're just basically closing him up. I could probably do with putting a bit more stuffing in mine at this point, but anybody got time for that, you guys want to get on and see the rest. Obviously take a bit more care than I have when it comes to stuffing and shaping and eye placement. So when you have joined all your single crochets together with slip stitches, Chain one and leave a bit of a tail and snip your yarn. Pull it through, pull it tight. Give him a little final shape. Yeah, I've really got any stuff in here. <laughs> now grab a large eye darning needle. And you're going to weave in this end. I'm just taking it back through and then I'm going to weave it in and under these stitches. You take more care than I am. And then once you're happy, you want to sort of lose it in, bring it up somewhere else. And if you pull it a little bit tighter, snip it, and then that end should fling back into the body. So now we're ready to give him his little watermelony features. So first off, let's make him a couple of adorable little cheeks. Grab some light pink yarn. And a three millimeter crochet hook. And we're going to make two of these little cheeks into a magic ring, six single crochet. Pull the magic ring closed, but not all the way closed. Measure up, go, yep, that's the sort of size I want the cheeks. If you want bigger cheeks, you can do another round of single crochet, but I'm quite happy with just having these little tiny dinky cheeks. So my sixth single crochet, I'm going to join with a slip stitch to my very first single crochet. Chain one and leave a nice little length of yarn. 
so you can sew this cheek to its little chop so pull it up pull it tight pull that magic ring closed I'm just going to trim the end you might want to weave in the end of your little magic ring weave this back under there but I'm just going to snip it at that point grab your large eye needle again And then I like to put it down through the next stitch. Next to that's my little chain one. Pull it down. And then you are ready to sew this little cheek directly under the eye here or just to the side. So it's like a sweet little blushy cheek. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sew this on. As I keep saying, you guys take way more care and time with your sewing than I am doing. I'm just literally rushing this poor little fella. Once you're happy with the placement, bring the yarn out the back for a second. That way you can see Oh, that last stitch was a bright mess. I'll redo that one. I wonder if I pull it tight. Will you notice? Okay, be neater than me. <laughs> be way neater than me. But go ahead and make a second cheek. I'm going to fix this stitch. You make a second cheek, sew it on. And then with your yarn tails, bring them both out at the back. Back to here, to the same point together. Knot them tightly so that knot is going to be within them then thread the tails elsewhere. I'm just gonna sew on the other cheek and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So I'll meet you back here in just one moment. Okay, so I've just sewn on and made <laughs> rushing again, but cheek number two, I haven't sewn it on particularly neatly. I'm not quite sure what's happening over here, but I've threaded both tails out the other side. So what I was explaining a second ago is knot them To knot them then thread your yarn needle again and take these tails go in separate directions and just go back into the body take them off over here pull it through and that will pull the knot into the stuffing as I said this is not designed to be a child's toy you can see why <laughs> just an adorable little home decor so then you are good to snip your yarn ends and grab yourself some black cotton all right I've got some black cotton here a scrap of it I'm just popping it onto my yarn needle first of all we're going to do a little smile here and then we're going to do the little watermelon seeds so come in from the back and sort of vaguely gauge where you want your smile to be. Now, a bit like the safety eyes, you want to try and catch in between, hopefully I wasn't completely off shot then, like the safety eyes, you wanna catch in between some stitches, otherwise your yarn is just going to pull right through. So you're sort of aiming for about there-ish. Wow, this is so hard to do on camera. <laughs> okay, for about there-ish. Leave some yarn coming out the back, and if you pull through any stuffing, if you give this a gentle pull back, it will pull that stuffing back in. So I'm leaving a length hanging out the back. And you want to work out where you want the little smile to be. I want mine to be about sort of here-ish. <laughs> so go ahead and pop. Oh, I've got such a little wonky face. <laughs> pop your yarn in there and then come down at the sort of midpoint where you want the smile to be now let's all go very very gently at this point because you just want to double check you're not going to pull through any stitches so i've got the little straight line and then you want to catch his little smile so go back over that loop 
and I'm actually going to go through that stitch and bring it back out and I'm going to cross my fingers that this works first time. It doesn't usually when I'm trying to do this on camera. <laughs> I don't know if it's because I feel the pressure or what, <laughs> but you take your time with this adorable little smile. He's a bit wonky, just like the rest of his face, but that gives you the vague idea of how to do a little smile. So once you're happy, I'm not happy, but then I'm never going to be happy because I put the eyes on wonky in the first place. Just like you did for the cheeks, bring these two yarn tails together, knot them and run them in different directions. All right, now your final flourish to make him look like a watermelon as he needs his little seeds. So we're going to just sew a few little lines if you want to double it up so it's slightly thicker, you can. But we're just going to sew a few little lines on his face around this final pink round and a few on his back. So he looks like a little happy watermelon. Same general technique. Leave a tail out the end and then you just want to be sewing a few general seed lines. Now, if you're not happy, so I've just done a cute little short one there, and these two big long boys look atrocious. If you're not happy with how you've sewn them, you do have your yarn tail out here, so you can always undo what you've done and redo, I've got a second needle, redo those little seed stitches. So I've been actually prefer them being a little bit shorter. So you're free to experiment. So don't forget to do a few out the back as well. So keep going until you're happy and then finish off the same way as we have been for all the others. I'm just gonna pop in an extra little seed over here so he matches. And that's it, you are done. Enjoy your happy little watermelon shelf buddy. Until next time, bye.